Hey, it's been a few weeks since I've made a Vision OS video. That's because I've been busy learning about particles and Reality Composer Pro. And there's a lot to the subject, so uh, today I'm going to go over particle emitters in Reality Composer Pro. And there's a lot of options, so I might be splitting this video into multiple videos. Um, first of all, this article was immensely helpful for me. This is an article I found called Unlocking the Power of Vision OS Particles, a Detailed Tutorial by X Reality Zone. So take a look at that if you want to see what I've been referencing. So first of all, we're going to uh, want to open Reality Composer Pro, and we're going to need an entity, a 3D asset, to do that with. So here I have a cube, and these are USDA files. So I just simply found a cube.usda online, which I'm using. And the code for a cube is pretty simple. Uh, you can see it here. Define a cube. It's very simple. So let's open that in Reality Composer Pro. So in your project, you're going to want to go into Packages, Reality Kit Content, Sources, Reality Kit Content, and Reality Kit Content here. You can drag your cube in here, click this, and then open in Reality Composer Pro. And we're going to be working with particle emitters. So I've got a cube here. The first thing you want to do is click Insert Particle Emitter. So now your cube has a particle emitter. The basic idea of a particle is that it has a basic property, which is time. So a lot of these options right here are going to be controlling the time of your particle emission. So first thing I'm going to do is choose a particle You've got this six square icon here, and it has some of the default particles we can use. Of course, there's more particles that you can create, but I'm gonna start with these particles to demonstrate how particles work. You've got options here, fireworks, impact, magic, rain, snow, sparks. I'm gonna be choosing impact because I feel like the cloud particle is a good way to illustrate how particles behave. So now I've got a cloud particle on my cube. And if you press play, you'll see a little poof come out of your cube. It's hard to see with this gray background, so let's change the color. I'm gonna click this tab, particles, and I'm gonna change the color. Let's change it to green or anything, any color you want. I'll change it to red. And uh, you, can you can also choose an end color if you select this and the end color is blue here. You can change it to any color so the particle can change color over time. It goes from red to blue. Let's uh, change the birth rate. If I make this number a lot larger then I'll get a lot more particles. So that slows it down a bit so let's, uh, let's make it 20,000. Cool, so I'm getting 20,000, a birth rate of 20,000 particles. Okay, so you've got a transform window here. Pretty self-explanatory. Just sets the position, rotation, and the scale of your particle. Let's set the scale to four. You can change the Y position of my particle here. Make it slightly above our cube by putting it at 20. So you've got these three time properties here. Emission duration, idle duration, and warm up duration. So idle duration is just the time it pauses between emitting. So it's got a three second pause. If I set that to zero, then the particle will just continuously emit. You can see here, it's just emitting now. Warm up duration controls how long the first frame should appear before the first launch. So you can see if I put a warm up duration let's say a thousand to really make it obvious I'm gonna see a frame when it first launches so I'll, I'll stop it and I'll press play that is my warm-up duration but if I if I put it to zero then we're not getting any warm-up frame here I've set my particle to be in a position above the cube so it's like a cloud that's appearing over the cube with 1000 position the birth location determines where the particles will come from. Since I'm at a point, this really doesn't matter. It can be surface, volume, or vertices. We'll get into that later. 
The birth direction, you have options of constant, local, and normal. Local means the emit direction is relative to the orientation of the emitter entity's transform. Normal is the emitting direction for each particle is along the surface normal vector at the point where the particle is emitted. And world ignores the orientation from the emitter's entity transform. So what does that mean? Basically, local means it's relative to the entity, which is my cube here. My entity's transform. I've set the position back to 0, 0, 0, so it's relative to this cube. So to demonstrate normal, the normal birth direction is, is basically determined by the emitter shape that you select. And it's kind of the default behavior of the emitter shape. A uh, local birth direction will give you a few more options to use about how you want your particles to be emitted. So let's just say that the normal birth direction is, is kind of a default option you want to use if you don't want that much specific control. And I'll demonstrate. So to really demonstrate, I've changed the speed of the particle emission. And that really makes the particle jet out a lot more. So you can really see what's going on. So if I change it to five, going to see how the particles really burst out from the shape that's selected. So I've selected a box and you can see that the particle will just burst out from each of the box's sides. You can see one from the top, left, right, back, front, and bottom. If you select a plane, the plane is just a 2D surface so you're, you're just going to see particles in it in one direction. A sphere, you can see the particles burst out in a spherical shape. A cone. You can see it burst out in a conical shape. A cylinder. It bursts out from in a circular shape. And a torus. That looks kind of like a sphere shape to me also as well. You can also get a, a different perspective of how the particles are being generated by changing birth location. So let's imagine we've got a sphere here. The particles, if you select volume, the particles are treating the shape as if it's a volume. They're bursting out a bit more randomly, more, a bit more scattered, but if they burst out from the vertices, we're gonna see a bit more order within the burst. They're bursting out in the linear form, more like a firework here. And if we choose surface, then they're bursting out from the hypothetical surface of the sphere. If we select volume, they're bursting out from within the sphere. Now these birth locations don't matter in a point, but if we choose a box, you can see how they're bursting out from the surface. And it's gonna take a little bit of experimentation to just figure out what you want. So for example, check this out. Uh, I've selected a cone and I've selected vertices. And you can see they're kind of bursting out from six vertices from the cone. Now what if you wanna emit a particle in a specific direction. Well, I've selected point here, and instead of normal, where there is a default behavior for the particle emission, I'm going to select local, and I'm gonna change the emit direction here. So this is the x direction, this is 10, so it's it's shooting out in an x direction of 10. And then you can uh, modify that. You can add different numbers here. You can have it shoot in the z direction, so now it's shooting towards you. And then you can put negative negative numbers here. So if I want it to shoot to the left, I put a negative 10. So that's all the time I got for today. I'm going to go more into these particles, more into the options in a future video, part two, perhaps even a part three. So stay tuned, like and subscribe, keep watching the videos and then watch my art and my music videos if you'd like to. Thanks for watching.